So with linear inequalities and two variables, let me start off by showing what this sort of means. So let's say we have a Cartesian plane here. And let's say there's a point here, x0, y0. Now, if we choose a point directly above this, well, this point is x0, same x coordinate. So I'll draw a vertical line here to emphasize that. I know my, my drawing's a little off. I'm going to call this a different y coordinate, y1. So let's take another point. Y2 to give us X0, Y2. So what we want to note Let's take a look at these y values. Now, because this point is above the blue point, the red point here is above the blue point, we're going to say that y1 is bigger than y0. And then down here, we have y2 below y0. So we make the observation that this point has a larger y value than this point, but this point has a smaller y value than that point. So we just want to make that note. I'm just going to repeat myself here, but just for sort of a completeness. have something like this. So that's if we're comparing points. Now when we're working with two variables, we're actually going to be comparing points nonetheless. It's just we might not realize that's what we're doing. So let me give you an example. So this is the line, say, y equals mx plus b. It's the equation for a line using the slope-intercept form. Now, if I choose a point on this line, well, at this location, and again, x0, y0, 
we have our point x0, y1. And then here's our point x0, y2. So we've got the exact same situation as we had before. Again, y1 is greater than y0. And then here, y2 is less than y0. I'll put this line through here just to emphasize they're all on the same line, that vertical location. But there's another way of saying this. So let's choose an x to be any location on the x-axis. Now here at this point, that's on the line, y equals mx plus b. And if we think about the points above, let me do this a little differently. All these points above, y will be greater than mx plus b. And then for the points below, y will be less than mx plus b. So any questions about that? Does that make sense? So if we call this, say, our y0, then all the points above this y0, the y-coordinates of these points are going to be bigger than this y-coordinate. And all the y-coordinates of these points are going to be less than that y coordinate. So, any questions about that? All right. So, let me take one step back from this. Again, we've got our line. So what we're going to imply is this. 
since x could have been any location on that x-axis. If we choose an x value here, then we'll have a point here on the line. But then all the points above, they'll have y-coordinates that are bigger than the y-coordinate of the point on the line. Then all the y-coordinates of the points below will have y-coordinates that are smaller than the y-coordinate of the point on the line. So this basically divides our Cartesian plane into two regions. The region where the y-coordinate is bigger than the y-coordinate for the point on the line. Or put another way, because y0 will equal that. In fact, so there's not going to be too much ambiguity when we put a zero there. And then here we have y less than the y0, which is going to be the y coordinates along the line. We oftentimes write it like this. So we end up breaking the Cartesian plane to these two regions. The region where the y-coordinates are bigger than the y-coordinates on the line, and the region where the y-coordinates will be smaller than the y-coordinate for a point on the line. So any questions about that? I guess another way of quick picturing it um, is that if we do this, So let's associate these vertical columns of points with a point on the line. So what we're saying is this. This region above the line this is where you find points that relative to their blue point in the middle of the column, the y coordinates of the red points are going to be bigger than the y coordinate of the blue point. So that's what this region is above the line. Or another way of putting it, where the y is greater than mx plus b, which is the line. And then down here, 
This is the region. Or it's exactly the opposite. Or another way of putting it, since the blue point is always on the line mx plus b, it's going to be that. So, any questions about that? So, let me do some examples. Let me show you how this works. Let me pull some from the homework here. So, for example, Let's say we're going to graph x plus y is greater than or equal to 3. Now, one of the things you're going to notice about these kinds of problems is when we uh, graph these, we're going to be graphing regions in the Cartesian plane instead of, say, just like a single line. So the first thing we want to do, number one, graph. We want to graph this as if there was no inequality, but there's an equal sign instead. So that's what we'll do first. And then there's two ways of actually determining what part of the Cartesian plane is our answer. And I'm going to go with this method first. Solve for y. So this kind of will go together, because if you're going to graph this, oftentimes we solve for y anyway. So one and two sort of link together. And then finally for three, If you have y greater or y greater than or equal to, you're in a shade above the line. Or You use y less than or y less than or equal to to shade below the line. And there's one thing I do want to mention, there's sort of a caveat to this. First off, let me double check something real quick. So they'll use something called a test point. We'll talk about that later. But real quick, if you have this or this, we're going to use a dotted line.
What this means, it means we're interested in points above the line or points below the line, but we're not interested in points on the line itself. So to illustrate that point, we just use a dashed line or a dotted line. But if we have this, we'll use a solid line. And the reason we use a solid line is we want to include the points on that line. So, any questions about this before I jump into it? So, we're going to graph this. We're going to pretend the inequality isn't there. We're going to graph this. Oftentimes, the best way to graph it is to solve. So, we're going to kind of do one and two in the same step. Then, if we solve for y with the inequality replaced, we have this or this. That means we're going to shade above the line. If we have this or this, that's the region below the line, and we're going to shade there. And then we need to make a point. These, the hard inequalities, we use the dashed or dotted line. When you have the equal to included, we're going to use a solid line. That means we're including the points on the line in our solution. So let's take a look at this. Now, I might change how they present this a bit and say, solve for y to start. So that's how I get it. You kind of combine steps one and two. The reason I would say solve for y, you want to keep track of what's going on with this inequality. So if you look, when you were going to put this in y equals mx plus b form, you might divide by, by negative two. And that's going to switch your inequality around, and you might not catch it. So I'll do an example like that. I'll show you what I mean. I'll subtract x from both sides here. So you have y greater than or equal to, and this will be negative x plus 3. So again, I'm kind of doing step 2 first. I think that's oftentimes sometimes the better way to go. Well, often the better way to go. So this is the inequality we're actually working on. I'm going to solve for y here. And then I'm going to graph y equals minus x plus 3. The reason is the line is going to give me the boundaries of the regions. And I need to pick which region I'm going to uh, consider my solution. So let's graph this. So graphing this, well, I've got three as a y-intercept. So I've got a point here. My slope is negative x, or my slope's negative 1. Or to put it another way, it's negative 1 over 1. So this is the rise, and a negative rise means a fall. And that's the run. And again, this is always left to right. It's what we've agreed upon. There are ways of doing it backwards. And we put the negative on the top number. So that means we'll, every time we run, we'll drop a unit. We'll run. We'll drop a unit. We'll run. We'll drop a unit. And you really just need two points. But if you want to, Come up with enough points to at least get your x and y intercepts. You're going to be okay. So this here is negative 
y equals negative x plus 3. So now we take a look at our inequality. As we look at the inequality, we have y greater than. So that means if you have a point here, we're interested in the point with a y coordinate that's bigger. That means up there. So y greater than, shade above. So one more thing to mention, as we take a look at this, should we have a dotted line or a solid line? So there's basically three things you got to do here. You got to graph the line, which we've studied how to do. And then you want to determine, do you want the region above or below? And once you've determined the region, you want to make sure your line is dashed or dotted. Now, again, to me, it would make sense to do this sort of in the beginning, but um, sometimes that's not always the way this is done. But following the uh, sort of the standard practice, if you will, and they do it correctly in the book, they do consider it first. Sure enough, we're okay. We've got a solid line. So this right here would be our answer. That's going to be it. Okay, let me do another one. So let's see. Let's do this. Let me show you something where things might not always work. Do this. Let's say we have something like this. Well, again, let's solve for y. And I'm going to kind of take a stand here. Let's do that first. Next, we're going to divide by negative 2. Remember, we're dividing both sides by negative 2. Now, when we do this, though, what's going to happen here, this is going to flip around. So we can distribute this division like so. Because again, what we're doing is we're dividing the entire side by negative 2. When we divide everything that has multiple terms, if you have two terms here, each term will be divided by negative 2. So another way you can say this, we're going to divide everything by negative 2.
negative 4 divided by negative 2 positive 2x. Two so we have this new inequality. And then let's note, let's do what the book recommends. I agree. This means dotted line. So if it doesn't have that equal to underneath, it means a dotted line. So now let's graph this. equals negative 2 plus 2x. With the dotted line. So first off, negative 2. Let me get my axes in here. So this is our mx, and that's our b. And b in this case is negative 2. And again, when we're graphing lines, that intercept means that's where we cross the y-axis. Again, the thing with slope-intercept is we're given the slope, we're given the y-intercept. They don't give us the x-intercept, unfortunately, but at least we get a y-intercept. It's better than nothing. So the y-intercept is where we cross the y-axis which is your vertical axis, and that's there. Now the slope in this case is two. And again, we want to convert this to an improper fraction with a rise and a run. A run in this case is going to be one. So for every time we run one unit, we rise two units. Run one, rise two. Run one, rise two. I'll just continue like that. Now I gotta be careful because when I think about step one, we determine this is a dotted line. So I better make sure I got this. So I want to carry that observation of a dotted line with me into this part. So now I've got that figured out. So the next step, step three, we got to choose a sign. Which side is the solution? So now we go back to our inequality. We have this. So this part here means shade below. So we're going to shade just checking the time. We're going to shade below the line. Come back for that. So 
if we look at our line again, So this is the line that we had before. So what we're going to do in this case, we're going to shade below it. So this, with the dotted line and the shaded region below that line, that's going to be our answer. Questions about that? All right. Mix and match with pins, dry pins and wooden pins. So let me show you a special kind of line. Let's say we have this. Now again, what we're going to do here is um, solve for y. Oh, well, we've done that. That's pretty easy. Oh, there we go. We solve for y. And we want to make the note that this here means a solid line. So we're going to graph this with a solid line. Now, when we graph it, we graph initially as if there's just an equal sign and no inequalities. So having noted this is a solid line, that's what we've got y equals 2. So now that we've got our line for step 3, we need to choose which region. Do we go above the line or below? Step three. When we take a look at y, we got y greater than or equal to. So that means above the line.
And that's going to be our answer. So any questions about that? Now I've got another one to show you. Say if x less than 2. Well, in this case, there's no y to solve for. And when you have x less than 2, we want to be careful. What we're talking about is the Cartesian plane. So what this means It means all points with an x-coordinate less than 2. So we're not talking about the number line. This looks like something you would see on the number line. But this is actually a set of points in the Cartesian plane. So for this special case, again, we solve for x. It's the only variable there. I mean, that's already done for us. We've got that. X less than 2. But we're going to make a note. Because it's a hard less than. We're going to have a dotted line. So where is this going to go? Well, in step two, we're going to graph, but where the inequality is replaced with an equal sign. So we're going to graph x equals 2 with a dotted line. So that's going to be our second step. We're going to graph a vertical line. And vertical lines are in the form of x equals some constant. So we're going to get a vertical line, in this case, at 2. And because we have that hard less than sign, we're going to have a dashed line. Finally, step 3. Just like with y less than, we would go below the line, y greater than or above. In this case with x, we want to have all the x-coordinates smaller than x equals 2. So all the small numbers are to the left. So x less than or x less than or equal to means shade less. Or
x greater than or x greater than or equal to, well, that means we want x coordinates that are bigger than x equals to. Those are going to be found to the right. So we shade right. Questions about that? So since we have x less than 2, that means we're going to shade to the left. So here's our line from before. If we shade on the left side, that gives us all the points with an x coordinate smaller than 2. So, any questions about that? So, Let's take a look at this. So that's how we deal with single lines. I do want to mention one thing in step three is what's called a test point. So let me do another example before we get into systems. Let's say, ooh, here's a good one. So let's say you're running the this. Well, again, let's solve for y. Well, actually, we don't have to solve for y, but let's do it anyway. We'll do that. We could use, uh, we could look for intercepts with this one. Um, but let's do the, the usual trick where we try to get rid of these fractions, we try to cancel these denominators so we don't have to deal with the fractions, or at least reduce the number of them. In this case, we can eliminate them. So what's a number that's divisible by 2 and divisible by 3? And you don't get a remainder? What number can you divide by 2 and you don't get a remainder? There's a number you can also divide by 3 and you won't get a remainder. Same number. Well, 18 is a number like that. You can divide 18 by 2, you'll get 9. You can divide 18 by 3, you'll get 6. In both divisions, you don't get a remainder. There's actually a better one. Let n be 6. No remainder. And there's no remainder. So let's go with six. Now, what are we going to do with this six? So we found this, this uh, multiple that's going to help. So, what we can do, multiply both sides by six. And keep in mind, since we're multiplying by a positive 6, the inequality doesn't switch around. If 6 was negative, it would switch around. But because 6 is positive, don't have to worry about it. Again, we distribute.
So there's different ways of thinking about this. You can say this is six times X divided by two or six X divided by two. Well, if you take six X and you split it into two, you get three X. But another way you can do this or a shortcut way, we can just divide the numbers to start. Two goes into six three times. Three goes into six two times. And what does this leave us? Three X plus two Y is less than six. So we're still in step one here, solving for y. This is just a real stubborn one. So again, dividing both sides by two. I'll end up dividing two into this and also two into that. And since it's a positive two, again, the inequality doesn't switch around. And we could say three X over two, but it's typical to write instead of three X over two, I'll just again, work with the numbers have the three divided by two, like we had that six divided by two over here. So we finally solve for y. And what we know, this is going to be dotted. So now we graph so y equals three minus three half x. And what we're gonna do. Take a look at our Cartesian plane here. Now, again, the y-intercept, or the number without an x on it, in this case, it's going to be 3. Now our slope and again with slope, let's put the negative on the top number on the numerator. So this is our vertical change. It's going to be a fall of three units and this is our run. So we'll jog two units to the right. So we can drop three Go over two. And then this is again a dotted line. So that's the line that we have. So what's so different other than we were given a really tricky line to solve for y with? Well, remember, we're going to use something called test points. So what we would usually do, and again, I think this is easier, is we would look at the inequality and we would have, let me double check, y less than three minus three halves x. And so the y less than would mean 
that we're going to shape the local line. So this will be fairly easy. We'd be done. There's another way of doing this using test points. So the way you do test points, and this is something we talk about in the book, choose a point not on the line. We want to choose a point that's not on the line. So go for an easy point. So our line did something like this. Whether it's dashed, dotted, or solid, doesn't matter. Don't choose a point that's on the line. I'm going to go with an easy one. I'm going to pick 0, 0 as my test point. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to choose a point not on the line. I'm going to choose 0, 0. It's really easy to work with. The next thing I'm going to do plug in I'm going to plug in the test point into the inequality. And if it works, then the side the test point was on, that entire side will work, and that's going to be my solution. So if the inequality is still true after we plug in this point, then the side of the line the test point is from is part of the solution. So that means since I picked a test point that's below the line on the part that's underneath the line, if my test point works, that entire side is the solution. But what if the test point doesn't work? So if the inequality is false, then the other side, not the side the test point came from, 
that's the, the other side will be the part of the solution. So let's see if this works. We had solved for y, and we can use either inequality. We could use the one where we solved for y, or the original one for the problem. So if we go back to what we did with solving for y, our test point, and again, it has to be a point not on the line. If you pick a point on the line, you're not really going to get anything. You'll get equality is what you'll get. We won't tell you much um, other than whether the line itself is part of the solution or not. Well, we can figure that out by just looking at the kind of inequality we have. When it's a dashed line or a dotted line, it's not part of the solution. So plugging this in, there's our x, there's our y. So zero, is this true? Is this less than three minus? Three has times zero. Well, sure enough, it's true. This will be zero. Works. So because this came from the, the bottom half of the region, the region below the line, then that entire region will be part of the solution. So this is our test point, zero, zero. So we shade like that. And that's how we come up with our solution using test points. So I have probably, I have to do a little work on Thursday. I have time for um, one example where we do a system of equations. I'm going to use a system where we've already solved for things. Or not system of equations, but system of inequalities. So the key thing here, when we graph an inequality with two variables, our solution is uh, some region of the xy plane. It's going to be a region above a line or a region below a line. And then depending on the kind of inequality, um, if we have a solid line, that line is included in the solution. If we have a um, dashed line, that means that line is not part of the solution, only the shaded region is. Now, when we have systems of inequalities, in this case, we're looking for points that satisfy both inequalities at the same time. They'll satisfy the inequalities both at the same time. So what happens in the graph? Well, points that meet the um, requirements of both inequalities 
are going to be found in the solutions of both inequalities. So that means they're going to exist, these special points that do this, where the inequalities overlap. So the solution to the entire system is the region in the plane where the individual solutions to each of these little inequalities, it's where they overlap. That's where these individual inequalities share the same solution. So let me give you an example using something we've already seen. I'll we'll have to save more complicated examples for Thursday. So we've seen this, y greater than or equal to 2, x less than 2. So this is y greater than or equal to 2. We've got a solid line and all the points with the y-coordinate that's bigger than 2. And we've seen this one. Here are all the x-coordinates, or all the points with an x-coordinate less than 2. So these are all the points with a y-coordinate greater than or equal to 2. And we can have equality of 2, that's okay. But these are points where the x-coordinate is strictly smaller than 2. So the solution to this system will be where these two solutions overlap. In fact, let me do one thing. Instead of blue, let's make this one red. So you have x less than 2, x greater than or equal to 2. So let's plot these on the same plane and look at the overlap.
So if we think about the overlap, the overlap is going to be here. A little bit be careful there, but that's going to be the solution to the system. So now we got to try to draw this overlap. So as we try to draw it, so we have the solid ball. We have this dashed line. And where they overlap is definitely up here. Now, the last thing we need to do, if we take a look at this, let's take a look at the lines themselves. This solid line is to the left of x equals 2. So this solid line will be included in our overlap. It'll be part of it. Where we have to be careful is where the lines intersect. So x equals 2, I'm sorry, x less than 2 is a dashed line, and then y greater than or equal to 2 is a solid line. So y greater than or equal to do, 2 says we can have this in the solution, but x less than 2 says we can't. So which one is correct? And what we tend to do is we default to the not part of the solution. At the intersection, we're going to have a hole. So at the end of the day, what our solution looks like Our solution at the end of the day is going to have a hole here. So when we have to choose between including something or excluding a point, we're going to lean on the excluding. Now, if this was x less than or equal to 2, then we would include that. That would be fine. But because it's x less than 2, we're not going to include it. So finally, What our solution will look like it'll look something like that. It'll continue on forever this way, and forever like that. So any questions about that? Now, we'll get into more complicated systems on Thursday. So this, this section actually does take a little bit of time, and that's happened in the past. So we'll work on some other systems, um, really just where you have, instead of a y greater than and x less than, we'll have two lines and we'll look at how to solve those systems. And then finally, we'll look at systems that don't have solutions, and um, we should be done. So that'll be it for chapter four, so we'll probably delay about a day, but that's probably gonna be okay. Um, what that means is I could do a review on Tuesday and then open the test and then give you until like Friday to work on it. So that would still keep us on schedule.
So unless you have any questions, let me know. Um, other than that, uh, have a wonderful day. Again, office hours will start in about nine minutes. So um, stick around if you have any questions. If you don't, I'll see you in office hours. And again, if the office hours don't work, um, let me know. I can always do like a one-on-one -on -one appointment at a more convenient time. All right. Well, unless you have questions, have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. You too.